Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Today is Thursday, July 2nd. Obviously, Friday the 3rd closed in observance of Independence Day, so I hope everybody has a nice, long, fantastic weekend. Relax, get away from trading, recharge the batteries, get ready for Monday. So we're going to talk about the alerts, we're going to talk about the current portfolio, we'll talk about the market over, overall, and then we'll end it with a, kind of a recap, catch you up to what we're doing on the day trading strategy in anticipation of the upcoming uh, day trading course that is coming soon. So let's let's actually start with let's start with the market. So this is a chart of SPX. I was I was watching something recently, and this individual was adamant that their trend lines were uh, kind of the, the holy grail. And and so this is SPX. And so I wanted to point something out because it's. You know, I think I think it gives people a false sense of security or a false sense of what's actually going on when they try to use those things as crutches. So if I let's let's just say, for example, OK, so the market's kind of trending sideways here. And and, you know, this person had all kinds of trend lines on their chart. So like they had one from here. Let's just add a trend line. So kind of touch this point and this point here. OK, so that's that one. Uh, they had one here from the very bottom to at that point it was it was right here okay then they had they had a couple more i don't really remember maybe it was like this one to that one anyway so what they were saying at this point here was okay if we hold if we hold this trend line we're going to go higher if we break it we're going to go lower well if you if you see what happened here i mean Whichever one you're looking at, I mean, uh, it kind of came down and tested it, and then it rebounded, and they thought, okay, now this thing is going to rip higher. What did it do the next day? It ripped lower. It broke. It definitely closed. It broke below both trend lines, so that should be super bearish, right? And that thing, and now the market should just go down and see these other levels, this level, this level, this level, uh, and maybe the world will come to an end. But what what happened? Well, it just ripped higher, and then now it's back up in above the trend line. So. I, I just point this out because there's just there's so much stuff out there that just doesn't it, it just and of course there's tons of times where you can say oh look yeah but this time the trend line broke and but the reality is it's a 50 50 deal like I don't care what your trend line is or your resistance level or anything like that it's a 50 50 chance so if you want if you use them to help you with just engagement and a comfort level to enter a trade, cool. I have no problem with that. Just make sure you're still using probabilities and strategies around that, uh, because you know people who just trade directionally and just use this kind of stuff, it's just I don't know. It it works about 50% of the time, and that's just a perfect example of what happened. So S and P's ripping and roaring again. Let me zoom in a little bit more here, and let me get rid of these stupid things. Uh, remove, remove. Okay, so uh, you know, obviously the markets went down last week. Uh, I, you know, and personally, I, I really, after kind of the, some of the things that were that were going on, and and just the price action, more the price action than anything else, I really thought we would potentially continue to roll over. We did not, and so we ripped higher uh, all week. I mean, today was up even more, but it kind of fell off towards the end of the day. But um, very bullish week here. So uh, what, what do I think next week? Well, I think, I think we're going to continue to see some of this two-sided action. I mean, you know, we saw this massive downside. We saw this massive run higher. And now we're starting to see some two-sided action. So I, st I still think we're going to see some what, what seems like volatile swings, but staying within a fairly narrow uh, range, you know, in kind of this, this area where it's, it's big swings, but inside a of a consolidation box. So I think we trade sideways for a little bit. I don't think we ripped to new highs. I don't think we're crashing. Uh, but, you know, we don't know what's what's coming either. Nobody does. So that that's kind of my thoughts. I think we'll continue to just keep managing, keep using the same strategies. You know, I, if you've noticed, we, we've started to do a lot more defined risk, iron ducks, weekly double calendars, iron condors. And with the heightened volatility a, the price swings are so much bigger. So I, I like the I like having defined risk, but also the you know the strategies that we're trading have been doing very well. And while we still have some strangles on, we'll go through all the positions uh, and still some futures and things like that. We're 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 our position sizes have gotten smaller, and we're doing a little bit more defined risk. So uh, 
I'm sure you've noticed that, but I think it's a good thing. Uh, we're and we're 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 hedging our portfolio, so we're still making money yet we're fully hedged to the downside, and that is a good thing. So we'll continue to do that. Lots of iron ducks, lots of weekly double calendars, iron condors. We will still mix in undefined risks, futures, different things like that. Uh, but we'll focus more on on that and just keeping our position size smaller. So our, you know, obviously our profits aren't going to be as big, but uh, but but the consistency doubles and singles is what we're looking for. So look for more of that in the near future. Uh, let's go to the alerts, starting with the 29th, which was Monday. First alert was a weekly double calendar. We already had one on. This one had uh, three days to expiration in the front week, and so we added that one. Now, uh, obviously, with price ripping higher, that, that did not bode well for this trade. So we went ahead and just closed that out uh, yesterday on Wednesday. Uh, so took a loss on that one. Next trade, closing trade in IWM. So we closed out a few of our bunkers. And remember, I mean, you know, I know I've heard, I got a couple emails from people saying, are you sure we should still do these bunkers? They don't seem to be working well. Well, of course they don't work well when you when you got the market going straight up like this. But we will continue to, to keep them on because like I said, if you can make money and be fully hedged, that is a very, very important thing. So uh, yeah, took a loss on that, but it's okay. I mean, it kind of, it served its purpose, didn't work out. You know, we didn't get the downside action that we were looking for, but it still served its purpose. And then right away, we put, we took that one off, put on another one, this one with a 109 days to expiration. And, and remember, you need to do what, what you're comfortable with as well. I mean, we're these, the goal of the alerts is to show you how we're trading and what we're doing and what we're thinking, you know, explain why we're doing what we're doing. That doesn't mean you have to do the exact same thing. So if you are more comfortable or you're more bullish or you don't think you need as much of a head, then don't do it or do less. Uh, but but it's but you know after doing this for 20 years, uh, you've got to you've got to protect yourself in some way. So whether that's some other form of short delta or this strategy, whatever it might be, you know I do think it is critical to uh, to do to have a plan before the market goes down. You can't. There's nothing you can do after it goes down. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta implement before it goes down. And if the market does grind higher, if it rips higher, uh, those positions are gonna take heat, and that's just part of the game. Uh, so, got another bunker on in IWM. Let's check out IWM. Oops. And, oops, I accidentally opened my Tastyworks platform. Let me close that back down. All right. So, uh, IWM. Go to the Analyze tab. Here's the bunker that we put on here. So this is the one out in October. We also have one in September. And we're up a little bit on that. We're up more, but again, we were looking for a big push down before we close that out for a profit. Still may get it. Uh, got some time left. We want to we exit these when we've got about 60 days to expiration. So we've got some time left on this uh, before it starts really sinking into Death Valley, which we definitely want to avoid. So we'll be dealing with that in the coming weeks. Uh, while, we're, while we are on IWM, we've got a couple different vertical spreads. This one out in August. You can see prices hanging out right here by the by the uh, break-even point. And then this one, still in July, and we've got a decent profit on this one. If this one continues lower or just kind of stays where it's at, we're over 50% of max profit. So we'll go ahead and roll this one out to August. Both of these keeping that for that short delta, for that downside bias exposure. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in SPY. So we added an iron condor. Did this one with 52 days to expiration. And the very next trade, we, we closed our one in July. So we, you know, we don't roll four-legged spreads, but essentially we opened this one in August and then closed out the one in July. We had both orders in at the same time. So this one just happened to fill before that one. So if we take a look at SPY, got a few different pieces in X SPY. Uh, oh, actually, we don't. We closed out those iron ducks. So we've just got this. We've got, uh, um, okay, so price is hanging out right here. So well within range, just waiting for some more time to pass and some more theta to decay. If we do get some, you know, continuation higher, we'll, we'll potentially put on another bunker, maybe do that in SPY. I like doing them in IWM. It's a little bit lower price symbol. And uh, you still get a good bang for your buck. And the small caps have been more volatile. So uh, we'll, we'll look to continue to do that. But that's SPY. Closing trade, that's the weekly double calendar. I mentioned that we closed after price ripped through our upside break even. Uh, 
SPY. So we had an iron duck. We went ahead and just let this one expire. Uh, it was it was well into the beak, and so there's no reason to pay. I couldn't even get out at uh, at under a dollar, which would give us full beak profit. So with Thinkorswim, uh, there's no expiration. There's no exercise or assignment fees, so didn't have to pay a commission to get out. And so we just went ahead and let that expire, booked beak profit on the trade. And so that is basically uh, we, the, the difference between the call spread is $1. Uh, we sold it for $1.29, so it's $29 per contract. So 29 times 5, whatever that is, 100 Hundred some, hundred and forty some dollars, I think. Uh, that's what we booked on that one. Next trade, opening trade, SPX weekly double calendar. Did this one with eight days in the front week, eleven days in the back, and so we'll, let's take a look at SPX. Uh, let's see, SPX. So this is the only one we, we took our took our other one off today, basically for a scratch, tiny profit. Uh, so this is the one we just put on. So. Uh, prices hanging out right here. Now, uh, I can't remember who it was in the community. Some somebody said that they are there. They didn't. They 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 lost their confidence in this strategy. So I, I did want to kind of address that because if you lost confidence in this strategy, which has been one of our more our more profitable in this environment, um, I don't know what to tell you because this has been a really good performer. Uh, but basically, and, and maybe it was just, you know the couple this week. We took loss on on one this week, and then took a tiny winner on one this week. But remember, I mean, this is this is the risk of this strategy is something like this, where you just get a one directional move during that week with no pullbacks and implied volatility declining. So if that's not your style, then then yeah, that's not your that's not the strategy for you. But that doesn't happen all the time. And so this has been a very good performing strategy. Uh, and, and keep in mind, so so if you look at it right here, so, you know, right now, so what we would we pay to put this on? About 700, call it 760 bucks. And if you, if you go to, you know, the day before expiration, so the 9th or the 10th, let's just say you took it out, took it off on Thursday. I mean, you're talking about a, and this, this doesn't, take into account what price or, or volatility does. But if it stays kind of in this range, which is a pretty decent range, we're talking about a profit of about, let's call it 330. Okay. So you're risking 750 to make a potential profit of 330. Obviously, if implied volatility spikes, I mean, we, you know, not, not this week, but the week before we had a, we had a profit of over $1,300 on one of our, one of these positions. And we were only risking, you know, maybe seven or 800 bucks. So, if you can if you can get this kind of bang for your buck and not to mention uh, you know it's not always the amount of profit but the the probability of getting a profit is is so I mean the the probabilities are in your favor and the chance of booking you know as much or a good percentage of what you risk is uh, pretty solid with this strategy so I'm not I, I'd like I'd love to hear more about kind of the reasoning of why you lost confidence in the strategy but you've also got to remember that you, you can't look at a couple trades and think, oh, that's a good or a bad strategy. I mean, everything that we do here is based on probabilities and statistics over time, over a large number of occurrences. And so we're just we're just putting the probabilities in our favor and and trading that way. Um, you know, there's always going to be short short term situations where you have where you don't make money on trades or you lose money. Uh, but that's, that's part of trading. So you've got to have a probabilistic mindset, a long-term over many occurrences type, type mindset. Cause if, I mean, you could, you could get in a situation where you lose 10 in a row, but that doesn't mean anything. Uh, as long as you're, you know, keeping your probabilities and your buying power in check. Uh, you know, the other thing I think may have something to do with it. I, anytime somebody starts, doubting trading, it's because either there's been a little bit of a streak of losers, which can happen, or they're trading too big, right? I mean, if you're trading too big for your account size and you and you have a losing trade, you know, you're just going to start having doubt in your mind and thinking, oh, this doesn't work. And But the reality is if you were trading small and it, it in a size that was insignificant uh, to that to that mindset, then it's not going to be a problem because you're going to know that over time you can keep doing these, putting them on, taking them off, putting them on, taking them off. Uh, you're going to be booking profits, but you've got to take that long, long term, a, a lot of occurrences type approach to this type of trading. So hopefully that helps. 
and if that individual's listening, I'd love to, I'd love to hear more post in the community, kind of why you, why you lost your confidence. I'd, I'd love to, I'd be interested to hear if, if it wasn't something that I discovered. Uh, next trade, closing trade in SPY Iron Duck. So we closed out another Iron Duck. This one, again, booked big profit. Price ran higher. Very little chance of getting back to the duck head. So we went ahead and just closed that early. This one still had, um, let's see, this was uh, this was July uh, July 8th. So yeah, still had, still had about a week left to go. But there's no reason to tie up that capital if you have a very little chance of getting back to the duck head. So we just closed that out. Book to profit, and we will redeploy that next week. Hopefully, after we see a little bit of a down day. But either way, we'll be adding some ducks next week, at least one. Next trade, closing trade in SPX. So this is our the one that we did today. I think we booked. I mean, we booked a tiny profit. Basically, a scratch trade on that volatility collapsed, kind of collapsed our profit tent, but we're still able to scratch out a profit. So. Uh, that is it for the alerts. Let's take a look at some of the other positions, starting with ES. So we've got a couple different long put verticals here. Uh, this one's just outside the, the uh, break-even area. And this one, same thing. So we've got two long put verticals holding this for that short delta exposure. GC, gold. Uh, gold was coming down nice earlier in the day, and it, it ended up closing up by almost a, a half percent. But if we can get a little bit more down movement, a little bit more time to pass, uh, we'll book a profit on this gold iron condor. Natty Gas. Natty Gas has had some pretty crazy swings. Uh, you can see big move down and big move back up, which got us right back into range. We're up about a little over 800 bucks on this since we did the roll. Still working our way back to profits on that Natty Gas uh, short strangle, which has been adjusted into a straddle. ZB, ZB was also down today early, and then it it spiked higher. And if it if it if bonds were down today, I was gonna go ahead and roll this out to the next cycle. There is 22 days left uh, on this trade, and so once we get down to near around 21, we'd like to roll that out. But I figured it bounced back up, not by much, but it bounced higher. If we can get a little bit of a down day uh, on Monday, that'll bode well for our roll. Even if we don't, no matter what happens on Monday, we'll be rolling this out to the next cycle uh, and, and continue to extend duration on that. Apple, we've got this long put vertical in Apple. You can see prices well, within range here, pretty close to where we rolled it, holding that for some short delta. Same with DE, price is hanging out near the break even. Same with DIA, we got a couple of short call verticals here. Uh, price hanging out with the near the break even on that one and uh, inside the range on this one. IWM, I already mentioned. QQQ, got a couple sets of, well, we got a bunker. Uh, you can see price is hanging out right here, so we need some downside action to benefit that. And then same with our two short call verticals, that one just outside of range, this one a little little ways out of range. So we need some downside in the queues to get back into range there. SMH, we've got this adjusted strangle. Price is hanging out in the upper end of the range right here. Uh, if we look at just the put side, you can see we still got a decent amount of premium left. So we're not looking to roll the puts up at this point unless price were to continue ripping higher. We've got, Oh yeah, we already rolled this out. So we, we're in August with 50 days to expiration. So definitely not looking to roll out in time anytime soon. We talked about SPX, talked about SPY. Uh, yeah, talked uh, XBI is the biotech ETF. We've got this strangle that's been adjusted into a straddle. Price is hanging out right here. Just need some more time to pass. Maybe a little downside action to benefit that. XLK, our last short delta position, price just outside of range there. Need some downside action, and this is in July. So if this thing continues much higher, we'll roll it out to August. And if it continues lower, well, we'll, we'll book a credit and roll it out to August. So that is the plan. Those are all of our alerts. Those are all of our positions. So let's chat about the day trading. So what's going on with the day trading? So this is for the week, for this shortened week, 629 through 72. A little bit of a loser down 277 bucks on the week. So a couple things I want to talk about. Let's go day by day. So Monday, uh, Monday was a losing day, lost about 2300 bucks. Uh, I posted in the Facebook group. 
Uh, we, we had a loser in Roku, and I talked about how Mickey Mouse got me on Disney. So uh, speaking of, let me go to the uh, Facebook group. So if you're not part of this yet and you want to kind of follow some of the things that we're doing, we post daily in here with our updates on the day trading. Uh, so this is the one from today, for example. Uh, just go to Facebook and search for day trading options for income or to search navigation trading. You'll see this day trading options for income private Facebook group. Uh, you, uh, we haven't, we haven't even talked about this to anybody else. We've just, I've mentioned it a couple times to pro members, but, uh, if you want to follow along, make sure you go there, check that out. We'll be, once we get a little bit closer to the class, we'll be doing some live streams and posting some additional stuff on that day trading. So, uh, that is the place to follow. Uh, going back to the slides here. So that was, and, and on this day here on the 20 on Monday, I mean, we really, I really traded pretty well. Uh, sometimes the bad guys just win, you know, so that was just, I don't really have anything to say about making a mistake. Uh, obviously those were a couple of sizable losers and I'll show you what, um, well, let's just keep going. Uh, this day booked about a hundred, well, not about booked 160 bucks. I was, uh, rushing out. So I didn't get, have a chance to get my screenshot of the positions that day. So, uh, that's, uh, just 160 bucks, not much going on there. Pricing, price swings were kind of back and forth. I was, I was down early, then I was up and then it kind of came, gave a little bit back. And anyway, just, uh, booked a little bit. Next day was a good day, uh, over almost 1600 bucks. Now this is, this is the day that I kind of started tweaking a couple things. Uh, you'll notice a lot more trades. And so I, I traded a lot more positions. I reduced my size significantly. And the other thing that I did is I'm, 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 the, the P and L swings are just too big. And that's the, that's one of the reasons that we're not, you know, rushing this out to, to do the course with you all yet is because we're still tweaking a couple of things because I don't, I don't, I don't want you guys to get shaken out of this because it's, it's a really good, solid foundational strategy, but there's just a, a couple little tweaks that, that we need to make so that the P and L swings are not so big because yeah, it's great when you have big, you know, winning days, a couple thousand, three, four, five thousand dollar, you know, two thousand dollar winning days. But if you have those as losers too, a lot of people, you know, emotionally can't handle that. And I don't, I don't want you guys to get shaken out uh, on a couple bad days uh, if you get down. And so we're really focusing here the next couple of weeks, really focusing in on reducing that those big losers. And, you know, this was a good example of that. I mean, we had a, a small loser in Apple or $330 loser in Apple and, you know, a couple other little losers and then, um, you know, some decent winners here. So a decent day overall. I really like that. Now, a couple of things, um, we, another, one other thing we did different on this day is, is, you know, we're cutting our losers quicker, letting our, trying to let our winners run a little bit. And, um, this, this also included some trading after 10 a.m. though, and that was that was part of letting the winners run. And so, you know, there's a couple a couple things. One, uh, there's there's kind of one one strategy that we're using the first part of the day, and it's more of a, I guess you'd call it kind of a counter trend trading where you're you are, you know, going against the grain and you're because the market is is moving volatile in both directions. And so but then after, you know, about 930 central time. So after the market's been open about an hour, 60 to 90 minutes, then you'll start seeing things where the market's kind of grinding sideways or kind of picking a direction. And so there's a you got to have a you got to kind of switch and have a completely different mindset for when that happens. And so that's just, that's, those are a couple of the things, and I know this probably doesn't make a lot of sense without, you know, understanding the full strategy, but I'm just trying to give you a little bit of insight and mindset stuff about what we're thinking about, uh, because we really want to make this successful for you guys. And we don't, we don't want to roll it out and people have, you know, happens the first week happens to be horrific and you have a bunch of losses and everybody just kind of gives up on it because there is, uh, you know, it is a very powerful strategy, but we want to make sure that it's safe as well and not, and nobody's getting hurt because that's the, that's the last thing that we want to see happen. So that was a good day there. Next day, uh, squeaked out a little profit, $291 profit. You can see we had two big winners and then, uh, 
Shopify was a decent sized loser. Apple was a decent sized loser. So if we could have, you know, really minimized those two, that was that was where I let things get away, where I let those get a little bit too big. And uh, I think it was beyond maybe two. I had a decent winner, and I ended up giving it back and not not booking profits quick enough. So uh, could have been much better, but still still a green day. On uh, and that was today. So. Oh wait, no, yeah, that was today. So actually, let me bring this up. I'll have my have my notes a little bit better. So this is kind of where we stand. But yeah, so today I was this. I was thinking of a different day. So I was today. I was on Thursday. I was up around three grand. And what I what I didn't take into account is that on a day before you know going into a holiday like this you're just going to almost see grinding sideways. And I, I held, I held way too long thinking that I was going to get a move in the direction and, um, just never got it. And then just held way too long and then had a, had a, I ended up giving it back. I wasn't paying attention cause I was doing other things, but that was a real disappointing, uh, today was really disappointing cause I was up really nicely. And I've, rem- you know, here's the other thing I remember thinking, okay, well, I looked at this. I was like, Oh, my biggest day since I've been posting here is about 4,800 bucks. I was like, I got a chance at having my biggest day ever. And so a little bit of, a little bit of greed, uh, seeped in. And, uh, anyway, I gave most of it back. So I only booked 291 on the day. So that was a very disappointing. So here's where we stand a little over 5,300 net total since we've been posting since the 22nd, uh, like I said, a couple hundred dollars in losses total for this week. So this, uh, Monday through Thursday, uh, lost a couple hundred bucks. So, you know, just, it continues to be a learning process. It continues to be a lot of fun. Um, it, and, and I know we're going to get it, uh, from a standpoint of just the little tweaks that we need to make. But like I said, I just, I don't like the big losers. I want to, I want to smooth out that equity curve. So if you were to plot your profits and losses on an equity curve each day, I want to see a more consistent move higher. I do not want to see the roller coaster ride. Uh, that we're kind of seeing right now. So that's what we're working on. Hopefully that is helpful, kind of getting you guys up to speed on that. Like I said, follow the Facebook group if you want to see more each day. And we will continue to uh, keep you updated on when this is going to be out. I've, I've got the course almost finalized and we'll be we'll be uh, reaching out and letting you guys know uh, more firm dates. But it is July. I want it, I want to do it this month. I can't, don't hold me to that. It might be August, but we are going to shoot for uh, sometime later this month to get this rolled out. So hope everybody has a long, great weekend. Everybody take care, be safe, and recharge the batteries. Look forward to Monday. Take care.